Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Friday Facts number 378, Trains on Another Level. And man, I hope you are firmly seated, maybe even holding on to something, because we are getting train bridges. I am absolutely serious, we are getting train bridges. I could not believe it when I read further down here and saw some pictures, but this is absolutely mind-blowing. I am, <laughs> I am beyond excited, like, man, I hope I can actually talk correctly, because this is just absolutely glorious like just I, I can't even put it in words so let's let's read the words they put to it uh the code refactor of rails represented last week is great but the motivation for such a task wasn't quite just some shape changes for rails as explained last week we can now define any kind of rail shape and we had some very specific shapes come along or mind and <laughs> shapes in mind all along sorry uh and this was written by uh, v here who did last week's over or under so there's the uh, kind of debate or just dilemma of do you do tunnels or do you do bridges and while in a like absolutely perfect dream world which this is not far from as you'll see but uh, you would maybe have both but you know that that would be just kind of ridiculous at this point for what Factorio can do uh, at first glance it would seem like underground is a safer bet they already have experience doing that with belts and pipes and such uh, but there's some other issues with that and just generally having trains do that is not as simple uh, and a few of the things are that the second layer of rails should also be able to use curves and rail signals, otherwise it would be quite limited, which makes sense, right? Straights would be great, but it only lets you do a few things. Sometimes you already want to interact with items inside of an underground belt. With trains, this would be a lot worse as they can run out of fuel, stop at signals, maybe crash if you didn't signal right, etc. Uh, building curves, signals are interacting with rails inside of a tunnel probably means we need to be able to walk inside, which is true. And if you can walk inside, that means biters and robots should walk and be able to go inside, fly inside, whatever. Uh, if tunnels can have curves, how could you tell which tunnel entrance connects to which exit when looking from the outside? Very true. It'd be pretty confusing. Uh, I mean, maybe they could do like a way to just like pull around, uh, pull away the ground layer and you can see underneath, but that's still pretty complicated in itself, I imagine. Uh, tunnels over water don't quite feel right. I mean, I don't know why they wouldn't do tunnels underwater, but maybe I'm just misunderstanding this point. Uh, drawing tunnels would be surprisingly difficult as we would need to do some expensive masking that Factorio isn't currently capable of, and more. The idea of an elevated rail seems to have much more potential, although drawing in an upper layer certainly won't be easy either. Also, uh, you just want to boldly see all your rails in their full glory instead of hiding them somewhere in a cellar, which is very true. And personally, I like this, what they show, a lot better than tunnels. Now, I'm not saying tunnels would be bad, but the way they do this, like, I am just thrilled. I, I cannot even tell you. <laughs> this is by far the most exciting thing announced for the expansion, okay? Not not to, you know, shoot down the space thing or the new planets, because that's amazing. Once we see more, I'm sure I'm going to be blown away by that. But so far, from what we've seen, for me, this is absolutely the top. I mean, rail bridges or tunnels have are probably, like, top two or top one top requested thing in Factorio like ever since I started playing from from everybody <laughs> and we're finally getting it so such an idea would consist of a rail ramp obviously to transition from ground level up to a higher level elevated ra rail tracks buildable above most things obviously and then rail support to basically just support the elevated rails and here's kind of a mock-up of it uh elevated rail and Trust me, it gets better than this. They actually show us what it looks like. Uh, elevated rail system pieces. These were the gray box graphics to test the gameplay of the new rail shapes and the ramps before the final graphics were created. And I'm just gonna, like, there. I'm, I'm just gonna sit here for a minute and let you look at this, because I cannot even, <laughs> I can't even believe this. When I read the Friday Facts, when I, like, looked up here and started reading this, I just didn't even finish. I just scrolled down and saw this and I just flipped out and it gets even better than this once you actually see this built here in a second below it, it honestly makes me pretty speechless so I, I like because this is so ironic that V actually says this I know you've already scrolled down to see ramp the ramps instead of reading this but it just felt weird to not have a paragraph here uh, so they go a little bit into more of the design of this when we thought about the visual design with Albert and Arendell, which, by the way, this is the dev of the space exploration mod who, his, who was hired onto the team. 
Uh, we wanted the ramp to be heavy and industrial, but at the same time, not quite perfectly stable and rigid. After multiple iterations, we have arrived to this combination of a solid concrete base combined with an upper metal structure. The concrete base helps clearly show where the ramp touches the ground, while in contrast, the metal part has a lot of holes so you can see entities placed behind the ramp most of the time. Which makes sense. So like if you had something placed like back here, uh, you know, you could see it, which is really nice. The metal's painted red, as mostly the only other red entities in Vectorio are related to trains. It helps the elevator rails belong to the train family and stand out in the factory as they should with their height. And I like this a lot. It matches, like you know, just like I said, it matches the train's base color. And then also just red stands out nicely. They could have chosen, you know, an unpainted metal color, but this just looks really nice. And the contrasts, it's a good contrast too to the ground level rails. And then the rest of the factory. Because you have to remember, and then going to this lower down, you have to remember that this is this is all just visual trickery. There aren't like <laughs> that there, there aren't multiple layers. I mean there are multiple surfaces in Victoria, but that's different. You, there aren't actually different heights. It's kind of like cliffs, right? Like basically they're just changing the collision of, of how trains work when they pass through each other and bob and underground. And then this is some very, very well done visual trick so the, the reason i go into that is just because technically like it is basically a ground rail is my understanding but just looks very much like an above rail and has some different collision so having this contrast between the two is really important and check this out so here are some different options so we have the bridge or the ramps like left to right and right to left and then we have the actual raised rails, which I guess is just two links. I'm not 100% sure on this. The rail ramps is a new long city, or maybe these are just the ramps, but from above it is actually, I think, okay, this is just the ramps from above. And as you can see, like you can't really even see the uh, elevation change from above, which I guess kind of makes sense anyway. But uh, in the game, it's 16 tiles long and four tiles wide. So you will need to consider where and when to place it can only rotate in four directions. Yeah, so this is really long. 16 tiles, that's half a chunk. So this is half a chunk long, and this is as wide as a robot port. It did need to be pretty big, though, understandably. And then we have the support rail, or the rail support, which looks fantastic, uh, but with the difference that it can be rotated in eight directions, which is super nice. And they show these directions here. So if you want to build, uh, you know, diagonal elevator rails, you can totally do that, or start a diagonal and then turn it. Uh, I really like that these allow you to go in different directions. Obviously, the ramp has to just be one of the four cardinal directions, but this lets you do some more with it. It has roughly a 4x4 four four collision box with the rotated ones all having the same shape. And, man, look at this. So, I mean, you can just basically build a whole rail system above ground if you want. You know, like this is crossing. Um, you see that, I mean, they do have signals. I don't. I feel like you can't really signal in a junction like this. I could be wrong. Uh, I'm noticing the signals are only where the supports are. Of course, that's conveniently right before the entrance, so that could be, co you know, coincidence. But um, I think you probably cannot signal this, but I could be totally wrong. Uh, the elevator rails can be built between ramps held by rail supports along the way. The elevator rail can be constructed above anything except tall entities. So you can't build it above a rocket silo, roll port, big electric pole. They say, etc. I would assume that includes like refineries. It's really the only other one I can think of, maybe radars. Uh, they have exactly the same rail shapes as the new ground rails do and signals can be attached to the elevator rails. So they, they don't specify it has to be at the supports that maybe it's just coincidence. So maybe you can just signal it exactly how you could signal normal rails. And also the fact that it can go in all the same shapes as the new ground rails we saw last time is just so awesome that like this is just icing on the cake there are fences which help uh, visually distinguish the elevator rails from the ground rails you can also see how they disappear on track crossings and we start to get a idea of what this would look like and yeah i mean it looks fantastic right and this is just basic there's some crazy examples down here in practice replacing colliding connection inside T-junction with a ramp going around, it can be a lot of help like this. Normally this would cross, but now it can go over. And man, look at what we can start to have here. The throughput potential that this gives trains 
is wild. Because, I mean, just because of the kind of randomness of the trains running and stuff, um, you don't see it a lot, but you do see it, like, just there. The trains, two trains coming two different directions are passing over each other, otherwise I basically defeat the purpose of this. Uh, and, I mean, like... <laughs> I don't know, I could just leave this going for like 20 minutes and watch this. It uh, it just looks so amazing. It really reminds me of Roller Coaster Tycoon. Like, this just, this section here just reminds me of a roller coaster a lot, uh, which which is not a bad thing at all. Um, that's just kind of what it reminds me of, and, and I love it. So, you can see here that and now it looks like... I don't know, I'm guessing they're going to require you to put supports every so often... Uh, and it looks like probably fairly close like it looks like you need one where there's a merge maybe and then you need one back here and then this is a ramp so it's probably just like x amount of rail pieces or and then maybe like when they merge or something uh, but man this just looks so good with the ramp being long and since we have only two layers building a fully multi-level junction can get rather large but the throughput potential is massive it's worth noting that it's not just the level separation that helps is also the fact that we don't need chain signals so we can shorten the distance between normal uh, rail signals a lot as we don't need to guarantee there's enough space for trains behind the junction right when you just can move on multiple levels you don't have to worry about like in this train make it all the way through here when they can just pass basically under and over each other anyways and then this this is actually probably my favorite part of this not only just visually does this look amazing but also the fact of what this will let you do. So in this example, they're having the entrance be on ground level and the assume, well, yeah, and the exit uh, being on uh, elevated on, on the higher level. And this can just allow so much more throughput around your stations and builds because you don't have you, one because you know this would normally like now in the game it would be just you'd have to cross this. So then. Trains going this way would have to wait for this, or this would have to wait for them, and that will no longer be the case. And, and, and you know, and they say here, specifically in a race of stops, having the exit entrance on different levels is a game changer. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> and and then also, uh, this part, I like didn't, so we'll, we'll read this. There's a very special p patch that draws under terrain, which is visible only in places where the ramps are, are or supports touch water. So I think I'm just kind of, dumb and don't actually like I don't see a difference oh I guess you do okay yeah because sorry I was looking on my phone initially when I read this but you can see how this like dips farther down there I think is what they're referring to and it just looks really nice on water so you can now build across lakes if you want to and I don't know why you wouldn't want to because that sounds amazing uh this this just looks awesome and then this is another example some craziness going on here and like you can just oh my gosh you can just see the potential i mean this was purposely i think made messy looking for demonstration but the thing is is this is obviously working impossible so you could like just the amount of of trains you can just have going through the same area in different directions you can go um is <laughs> it's just so awesome i'm just i'm so excited uh, in case you decided to route your trains through lake, because why not? Islands can become opportunities for multi-level crossings. So yeah, so you can see we're actually going... None of this is... This is all elevated to begin with, because it's going across a lake. But then here, they drop down a level so that they can have these pass under to not interfere with this. Because otherwise this would be uh, like a... Just like a normal crossing, but elevated basically. But they take the opportunity to drop down and then start right back up on another level going another way. And... It just works so well. And then you can see here kind of an example of a building with the rail planner. So building something elevated can be done with the rail planner. Either you can press a keyboard shortcut to switch the destination layer, uh, kind of like I would assume like City Skylines or something. You just like press the up arrow. Uh, and then you can start the rail planner on a ramp, rail support, or an elevated rail. As you can see here. But one day, Kovrex said, why doesn't the rail planner just snap to the rail you're pointing at? And since that day, it does. Rail Planner just connects to any rail you pick, including between ground and elevated levels. This also massively helps mitigate issues related to Rail Planner having more directions. And this this is like a hidden, I say hidden because it's not the main part of the article, but this is like a hidden gem of a change, kind of like the power poles 
uh, distance reach from last Friday facts. The fact that this just snaps to like whatever you're pointing at is just super nice, uh, which I mean, I feel like it kind of does, but it's obviously different. Um, and then being able to just switch like above ground, below ground or whatever w with it is just going to be really nice. And you can, they just kind of give an example of what they said here below. The rail planner can often find uh, connections you wouldn't even expect to be possible, which could be mesmerizing to play with. And yeah, so like if you want, you can have factory or you can have rails running through over <laughs> over your factory. <laughs> I mean, I can see this getting to a point where some people just go absolutely crazy with it to the point where you can't even figure out what where things are in your factory because you can't see them because there's so many rails going over them. You know, like here, imagine you just throw a few more rails and be like, what is even going on in this build? I can't even see it. Uh, which is, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Like just having rails go through and over your, your factories is just going to be absolutely fantastic. And then I think this is our, our last example of it. But again, you can see this is more of an example inside the factory. And uh, you, you see it's kind of going a bit over it here. These are below, or I say below, but they're below these, but they're ground level. This comes up, goes over this ground level one. I mean, heck, they have a station here. Um, I, I can just look at this for a while, deciphering everything. Belts weaving in and out. You know, obviously underground belts to go under the base the, the the ground level and then they don't need that where this is and as a result this can happen a lot quicker than you think yeah so this is <laughs> oh man this is just so good guys this is just gonna be absolutely unbelievable so the conclusion is basically so what it sounds like to me is the expansion is like adding a bunch of con well it's obviously adding a bunch of content like they actually were, were seriously not joking when they said that the expansion contains as much content as the base game i'm really starting to see that i was skeptical like how is that possible i can see now how it's possible <laughs> we get things like this things like the quality things like the productivity researches and the robot changes and the other rail changes and we're only like four five weeks in we we seriously have 40 plus more of these like what else are they going to show us that is going to blow our minds, right? Like, I, can't, I just can't even, I just can't even fathom it. So uh, the, the other point I was going to make, though, is based on what they say here, it seems like the expansion is going to obviously, like, it's going to be fine for, like, newer players. It's going to be great for everybody. But it seems like they are putting a lot of focus on having the ability to build bigger and bigger bases. And I'm all for that. Maybe not everybody will be for that. Uh, but as a mega baser, mega baser, uh, th like the fact that they actually are specifically mentioning this type of thing and doing changes like the productivity researches, like the quality, like this, that allow you to build bigger bases with less issues. It's just music to my ears. I, I really, really appreciate that they're taking that into consideration. So they say allowing trains to cross paths on different levels has been one of the most requested features for a long time. They always felt it made perfect sense, but trains in Victoria would rarely ever get into serious enough throughput issues to justify adding elevated rails. So it sounds like they didn't just want to add it for the cool factor, because I think that's why most people requested it, honestly. Uh, they wanted an actual reason to need it. And they say the expansion changed this landscape quite a bit, though. If we expect players to generally build, bit lar uh, build larger factories in the base game, train throughput could become an issue. And since you are expected to travel away from the home planet, having a train system that doesn't deadlock would be more important than ever. Which is a very good point. It's not hard to guess that implementing this would require a lot of time and working on expansion behind closed doors allows us some breathing room uh, where we could make bigger experiments. So a lot of work, unsurprisingly, did go into this, and, and it shows. Between Boss Kid with the mechanics and Posila with the drawing code, just the programming took a few months. On the graphic side, we could reuse a lot of the uh, initial blender setup from the rework of the ground rails, but that doesn't get us very far. The ramps were simply large objects, while the rail supports are a hive of optical hacks as they need to fill their collision boxes. Both the ramps and supports were reworked multiple times to finally get the result that work that would look and function well. Especially because of the elevated rail fences, the required sprite count grew rapidly. Uh, this made me use all the tricks in our Blender book and even add completely new Blender Python tools 
that mostly help with organizing and rendering large amounts of output. I got the final iteration at 90% completion, but then it just became too much. So then Jersey already had experience with rail graphics, so he helped V finish uh, the last details and textures, and then he handled all the signals and remnants, etc. It's hard to overstate how much bravery and mental fortitude is required to just jump into the blender file of the elevated rails, and I'd like to thank him for that again. You can probably see from the image above that he did excellently. Absolutely. Uh, and this is crazy. Between Arendelle and concept art, me on most of the 3D process, Jersey on finishing and together with Albert on reevaluating multiple major iterations of graphics took nine months to make, which is absolutely wild to me. Like, I cannot, <laughs> I never would have ever thought that this took nine months. I knew it was hard, but man, nine months for this. It, it, you can see why maybe we're still a year out. Um, we could have taken some simplified route trying to make tunnels work, but we believe the elevator rails offer better gameplay beyond comparison. And I would agree. Like, tunnels would be amazing, don't get me wrong. I don't know how, how you can argue against this. There's just something like does it like doesn't this just feel so much better than just having like a tunnel entrance right here and then a tunnel entrance here and like one over here and one over here and the trains just disappear and then come back up, which is cool. That's a cool thing. But like, man, this just fits the Factorio vibe so much better too, right? Because Factorio is 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 industrial, it's messy, like you know, all the stuff is kind of hacked together. That is how the game is supposed to feel. And that's what this is. That's what this, you know, like fits in well with. Whereas tunnels, I think, are maybe just a little too clean for it. And then we can go down here and we say, uh, so yeah. Uh, yet again, we can confidently say that, the, that properly focusing on some feature expansion rather than trying to shove more things into 1.0 was a very good decision. All the elevator rails will only are only available with the expansion exe executable. <clears throat> Their technology can be re researched using production science without the need to go to space or any planet, so that's super cool. Uh, elevator rails will be one of the standalone official mods next to quali quality and space age, so you can play a vanilla like game with just the elevator rails, for example, or other mods that can just depend on elevator rails. Which is cool too, that uh, it, it is not like a required thing. And then, as always, we're looking forward to all the feedback you're about to uh, elevate. <laughs> I like that. Alleviate, elevate. Um, so go definitely, you know, let them know on the forums, on the Reddit. And please, I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments, everyone. The uh, the response, all of your all of your comments and sharing in the last, in, in all the Friday Facts videos I've done here of these new Friday Facts has been absolutely awesome. I truly, I've read every single one uh, that that I see and it's just, it's just awesome to see all the excitement and your thoughts and you guys have had some fantastic ideas on stuff, you know, where I'm just like, wow, yeah, that would be a really good way to do this, you know, like with the quality naming and stuff. So please leave your thoughts here. What do you think? I mean, I would be surprised if anyone complains about this. If you do, I mean, everyone is welcome to think what they want and play how they want, of course. Uh, but I mean, to me, this is, this is 100% good. There's there's absolutely nothing bad about this Friday Facts. I am, I am just beyond stoked with this. And I hope you are too. And I would like to think here, you know, like would you have preferred tunnels? Uh, do you prefer this over what tunnels maybe could have been? Uh, you know, what are some crazy ideas you have with just, just, just drop your thoughts down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. If you did enjoy this and are excited for rail, uh, rail bridges, definitely leave a like. And if you're new, welcome and feel free to subscribe to keep up with all the amazing Friday Facts videos to come and mod spotlights, etc. And uh, as always, until next time, I look forward to seeing you all, and do take care.